In this video, we're going to talk about plants and fungi. So as we continue exploring Domain Eukarya, our next kingdom is Kingdom Plantae. This is a diverse group of organisms with over 250,000 identified species. That's a quarter of a million different identified plant species. Plants are defined as multicellular eukaryotic organisms with cell walls made out of cellulose and typically possessing the ability to photosynthesize. People are often surprised to hear that algae are not considered to be part of the plant kingdom, but it comes back to this definition about having cell walls made of cellulose. Algae does not have that, seaweed does not have that, and so for that reason, uh, seaweed is considered to be a protist and not a plant, even though it is multicellular, eukaryotic, and does photosynthesize. When we look at where Kingdom Plantae is located, it's found under domain Eukarya, just as the protists were, and just as fungi and kingdom Animalia will be as well. Even though there are many different species of plants, we can break all plants down into four major groups. There are the mosses, which are plants which lack vascular tissue. There are ferns, which are animals which have vascular tissue, yet, like mosses, they do not produce seeds. Both mosses and ferns, they do reproduce sexually, but they do so through the use of spores. Now, spores are different than seeds because spores do not have a hard outer coating which allows for distant transportation before germination. That's one of the, the key features of seeds. Now, the next group of plants that we'll talk about, they are able to make seeds and they do have vascular tissue. However, they do not produce fruit or flowers. These are the cone-bearing plants and they are known as gymnosperms. And then finally, we have the last group of plants. They have vascular tissue, they can make seeds, they are able to produce fruits and flowers. These are known as the angiosperms. And these are the plants we're often familiar with whenever we think about flowers or fruits, whether it's a rose bush or a tomato plant or an a orange tree. All of these plants, which produce both fruits and flowers, they are angiosperms. So here we see a breakdown of the relationship between these four groups of plants. What I would like to add to this diagram are the key adaptations that separate or divide one group from another. So the way this particular graph will work is that I'll draw an arrow where a particular adaptation was developed, and everything above that arrow will be considered to have that adaptation, whereas everything below that arrow will not. So the first to add is vascular tissue. Now, vascular tissue is a series of tubes or pipes within the plants that are used for water transport. So it's a special type of tissue used within plants to transport water. Mosses do not have this. And so for this reason, mosses are often very short and they need to live in very moist environments. They are not very efficient at water transportation. Whereas our other three groups of plants, the ferns, the gymnosperms, and angiosperms, they do have vascular tissue, and so they can grow to a much larger size. The next adaptation on our list is that of the development of seeds. As I had mentioned, mosses and ferns, they are not able to produce seeds. They do still reproduce, they just do so by spores instead of seeds. And the last adaptation, is the development of fruits and flowers. And as we see, angiosperms are the only plant group above this particular arrow. 
the mosses, the ferns, and the gymnosperms, they do not produce fruit and flowers. Now, plants are known as producers or autotrophs. This is because they are able to harvest sunlight and store that energy in the form of chemical energy. They convert solar energy, typically into sugar, and they're able to do this through a process called photosynthesis. The next group of organisms that we're going to talk about, kingdom fungi, in some ways resemble plants, but they have some different properties as well. So our next kingdom is kingdom fungi. Fungi are eukaryotes, again, that share some properties of plants, but they do not photosynthesize. These include organisms like mushrooms and molds. Another difference between fungi and plants is that the cell walls of fungi are not made of cellulose. Instead, they're made of a protein known as chitin. And this protein is actually more similar to proteins that make up the exoskeleton of certain insects and crustaceans than it is to the cellulose that makes up plant cell walls. The location of fungi within domain eukarya is between plantae and animalia. And it sort of makes sense because they have some properties and characteristics similar to plants, but also some properties and characteristics similar to animals. As I had mentioned, since fungi do not photosynthesize, they must get their energy and building blocks from organic matter. Often they do this by decomposing dead organic matter. Some fungi are symbiotic and beneficial To the organisms in which they interact with. This is often seen actually with the roots of many plants and trees, where fungi can help absorb nutrients and absorb moisture from the soil surrounding the plant roots. Yet some fungi are parasitic and pathogenic. There are a variety of different types of fungi. Often, their role in an ecosystem is that of being a decomposer, where they, you'll find them in forests on fallen branches and, and fallen leaves. Another example of a fungi is brewer's yeast. This brewer's yeast is what we used when brewing beer, making wine, and also it's a component found in baking bread. The body of a fungus is made out of thin fibers, and these fibers are known as hyphae. These fibers are thread-like collections of cells, which, while separate from each other, they actually have openings between them, allowing for the movement of organelles, even the nucleus, from one cell to another. These hyphae fibers form a dense mesh network known as mycelium. This mycelium ends up making up the body of the fungus. So here we see a diagram. A mushroom is the fruiting body of this particular fungus. And we can see the body of that mushroom is made up of a bunch of hyphae densely connected together into what we call mycelium. This takes us to the end of our discussion of plants and fungi. In the next video, we'll start looking at the diversity of animals. See you in the next video.